What up? This is Dope Dialogue, and this is the first episode brought to you by Today's Dopest on Instagram. Make sure you follow us. We got the homie Thurs in the building. We're going to jump right into it, Thurs. Thanks for having us. First question is, your single is called Iconic, so I want to know some of the most iconic influences in your career. Man, it's a good question. Um, so the most iconic influences in my career, I definitely... We start with maybe Stevie Wonder. I feel like uh, Songs in the Key of Life is like my favorite album like, ever. Um, just every song is different and then it all just flows and the songwriting and production is just stellar. So that kind of set like a standard for where I wanna, you know, my art to kind of meet or set a path for myself that's similar to what Stevie has done, which is hard. But like, you know, that's definitely one of the iconic guys that have influenced me. Um, I'd say Bob Marley. I um, just feel like he had a great approach to music and touched people. He touched on political issues and just really was the heart of, you know, a movement in Jamaica. And I really respect all the music that he's done. And, you know, you just kind of hear his heart. As soon as you hear his voice, you hear his heart. So it's, it's rare that you hear that in a lot of different, a lot of artists today. So he's definitely iconic for me. Um, I'd also say Michael Jackson, just as a kid, you know, just seeing him moonwalk and seeing him push the musical envelope, him and uh, Quincy, that was definitely influential for me and just trying to push different soundscapes. And uh, yeah, the list would go on. Like, you know, those are not even rap guys, but like, those are some iconic guys that, you know, pushed the envelope and inspired me, Prince. You know, um, yeah, man. Um, the list could definitely go on. I find that interesting. And would you say you have influences outside of music that aren't musicians? Oh, outside of music? Yeah. Man, okay. Uh, I definitely say Marcus Garvey. Um, everything about that guy is just, you know, revolutionary. And I love his mindset and him pushing, you know, his people and just the betterment of his people and just having this whole idea. The whole Black Star line was very dope to me. And I think, you know, he should be held in hot, the highest regard when it comes to like black icons. Um, shoot, um, Malcolm X. Um, I'd say Stokely Carmichael was pretty dope. You know, he coined the term um, black power. Ah, uh, who else are some iconic folks that have influenced me? Um, Muhammad Ali. Um, <laughs> Kobe, I give it up to Kobe too. You know, he's not like Muhammad Ali, but Colin Kaepernick is very dope. You know, I just love uh, athletes that use their, their platform to, you know, speak on issues that affect us outside of um, what really doesn't matter. You know, just, you know, using their platform to affect what really matters. So, like Kyler Kaepernick is definitely should be out in high regard as far as sports goes and just as far as humanitarians go, man. Uh, he's influencing me. I think he's iconic. Um, everybody I named is iconic. And uh, I, I guess that's, that's cool for right now. Yeah. So let's take it back a little bit. Um, when your run with you and I came to an end, did you have a vision of where you wanted your career to end up? And if you did, do you think that you're on track with that vision right now? Or was it more of a like go with the flow type of situation where opportunities would come and you would uh, decisively say, hey, I want to take part in this and I don't want to take part in that. And that's what shaped your career. And that's what we're seeing your position right now. Yeah, when when the run with you and I came to an end, um, I didn't have a concrete idea of where I saw my career really moving. I just knew that the first project I did, you know, on my own was L.A. Riot. And I wanted it to just have more meaning than what I was doing with you and I. You and I was very dope, and we opened up a lot of doors for a lot of West Coast artists. But like, um, I just wanted to do something that had a little bit more meaning to it. And at the time that I started that project, my boy, Mr. Whitmore, we did a lot of videos together. He was doing uh, all these different, um, he's doing a lot of research about LA history, and we test on the riots. And um, it sparked a, it sparked a fire in me just because I remember when the riots popped off. And I was driving from my grandmother's house with my mom 
And you know, I was telling the story wrong at first. I thought we were on, Flor I thought we was on Normandy and Slauson, but we actually did drive through Florence and Normandy. So like, we were right there, right when it was popping off and we saw like all these police and riot gear, just people uh, in the streets just upset. You know, it just looked like some a scene that I've never seen in America in, in my lifetime. So like, just talking about um, the research process with Tomas, it inspired all these different songs and it created itself essentially. You know, the LA Riot Project created itself just from, I guess me being here while it popped off and um, just being at a time of dissension from what I was doing with you and I. So like there are all these different points of synergy that all came together and it turned into a project. So, and then moving out, moving forward after that, um, I just wanted to continue to make music, man. And um, I wanted to be as big as possible, but I wanted to be as business minded as possible and, you know, control every aspect that I can. And I've just been trying to build up the core team to do that and you know opportunities come and help out the whole evolution of the idea so you know it's push it pushed me forward to put out the designer ep with trying to infuse different funk elements that people weren't doing at the time you know obviously the 70s kind of like birthed that really funky movement i feel like a lot of the best music comes in the 70s so that influenced like where that project was going but um I just wanted to push the envelope musically and just have fun and uh, be as business minded as possible. And there is no end trajectory. There is no end goal with music. It's just, just like a desire. Just always want to create. And um, the only goal is to like provide for the kids, you know, provide for the family and just make sure I'm like monetizing what I'm doing. But as far as music goes, I just want to keep, be able to create and have an audience to feed this music to. Very cool. So um, these days you hear a lot of artists talking about my brand this, my brand that, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you know, I'm a very literal person. So I know that at best a brand is um, a successful product that a corporation markets. And at worst it's a mark put on livestock or cattle or something like that. Neither of which is something that, you know, I really wanted to be. I always found more value in building networks which is more of a hub, somewhere that brands come to to spread their message, something like a Facebook, a YouTube, a MySpace, a party in my living room. Um, so you obviously have that insight, that knowledge. Um, where did you get that? Where did you see, how did you learn to see value in building a network and knowing that you could still promote your, your personal brand through that network, but um, it would be more beneficial to, to build a hub? Like, who taught you that? Man, I just always believe that, you know, everything pops off from the community standpoint. It's always like a village that's pushing an ideal or pushing a person that represents them. So, like, as far as music goes, I always wanted to build with like-minded individuals and be able to create, you know, people who I thought were dope. So, like, during the designer EP, I was just, you know, trying to build a collective of artists that I was consistently working with in the studio with, hanging with. And um, the idea of doing like a house party that everybody could come and rock, it was like a, I did a marketplace. Like my mom used to take me to like the African marketplace when I was younger, over by Dorsey and uh, Rancho Park and all that. And um, it was just like a spot where you just saw everybody bringing their art. You saw different performers coming. So I guess the idea of having like a central location where everybody could congregate was instilled at that moment. And I guess it kind of just always been in the back of my head, but just kind of like came more, became more and more apparent as my journey continued. And then just creating part of my living room, you know, it was created out of necessity. Um, just cause I got tired of really performing at these Hollywood venues and having like these different promoters that didn't really care about where I was from. You know, they just care about the hot song and packing the room out. I saw a number driven to them. So I was like, all right, I get it. You know, you gotta make your dollar. But I'm not really with that cause the vibe is not fully um, represents, re representative of where I want my music, you know, heard and how I want it experienced. So I wanted it to create a setting um, that people could fully experience 
you know, my music and fully experience how I want it to be perceived and fully experience it with people who I think are dope. And um, part of my living room is that. So the first one, I threw it down the street, you know, 108th and uh, second half. And um, yeah, I just put my band literally in the living room. And we had the designer EP, you know, it was the freshest thing that I had. And we rocked them songs, man. And you know, everybody came out, 500 people, and um, let me know that I was on the right track. And let me know that I, the network and the community that I was building musically was on the right track. So it's something that I want to continue to build. I've been able to take it to different cities. Recently just got back from Chicago. I had like GLC come out, you know, um, Hope is uh, a recent good music signing, uh, Mano, um, Slot A, um, who else, who else? Carl Carell, he's from Denver. When we, uh, Rich Jones, it's like, you know, wherever I take it, I want that community involved and I want them to come perform and just have a good ass time with DJs, good music, good vibes, good people, some good food, all that.